welcome, guys. Um, today, as uh, Brenda mentioned, I'm going to kind of discuss what we're doing in the brain field, but first talk about the technology that we did. Um, so the format of this talk, I thought it would be better and friendlier to just go over what we've done so you guys have an idea of what I'm doing. And then I have my team members here, I'll introduce at the end, and you guys can ask us any questions. Um, so I'll keep this one short, and if you have any questions, just uh, pop in, in and out during my presentation. So the title you see here is long. Um, this is from our paper. Uh, hopefully at the end of this uh, presentation, you'll understand why is the precision important that's digitally specified, spatially heterogeneous and engineered. Um, this is one of the constructs that we made that you will see in a, in a later slide. So first, I want to see by a show of hands how many people know about hydrogels or cross-linking. All right, so I'm going to go over, give a little bit of a background so you guys have a better understanding the technical terms of what we're doing. Um, hydrogels, you actually see it a lot in daily life. Um, we, us uh, tissue engineers, use it as scaffolds, 3D scaffolds to guide the uh, you know, cells. Why do we do that? Well, first and foremost, it's because it's simple to make. Um, the other one is it's reproducible and cheap. This is very important. You know, if, if you're going, going to end up making a tissue or something 3D, you want to you know, be cost uh, efficient in that way. Um, it's moldable to any shape. Again, very important. You guys can understand if you're making a tissue, you don't want rigid um, constructs. You want something that's flexible. And the, probably one of the most important, you can encapsulate cells inside. This means you have the ability to manipulate the environment and uh, kind of have a little bit of a control in the cell's environment. Um, this is uh, one of the, from a picture from the cover. Uh, you'll see this again, we made one of these constructs. Each one of these squares or cubes um, is a gel that you will see. So hydrogels, hydro, because most of it, and the majority of it, is, is water. So it's good for the, the biosystems. Gels, because once it's cross-linked, it turns into a gel. So that brings me to the idea of cross-linking. Uh, there are many types of cross-linking. We use uh, optical cross-linking. Basically, in the lamest terms, I would say, if you have a polymer that has branches, you've probably seen this in your basic chemistry, when you add a phono initiator and you expose it to UV light, um, these branches come and combine and become more stable. So when you start with a liquid, which is your hydrogen in liquid form, and you put, suspend your cells inside of it, you end up with a gel that you can manipulate. Uh, any questions on this in two terms that we've gone over? Great. So what is the goal? What was our goal in designing this technology? Well. Um, spatially position multiple cell types within high precision. You're going to see why high precision is important. It's important because if you're doing something like, complicated as a brain tissue, you want to exactly specify which layer goes where, and you want to be able to place that. We've done this a little bit with bioprinting technologies. You've probably seen some robotic um, printers, but our goal, one of the goals you're going to see is the low cost as well. Um, heterogeneous pattern. Very important, we want to be able to alternate between the cell types. We want to have a little bit of a freedom. Um, so the reason why we're doing this, this is actually from an ad Lego put uh, some time ago. Uh, what we want to do is, you've guys seen in the previous slide some cube-shaped um, gels. We want to bring them together and kind of, just like Lego does, put together a brain tissue. Of course, we're not aiming to put a whole brain uh, you know, together, but we're aiming to put some part of it that's damaged um, or we want to replace, regenerate, regenerate. So what is important for us in this technology that we want to build? Well, ton micron error in positioning seems good when we're doing it by hand, right? Not robotically. Um, low cost, again, we want to have this available in, in, inside, outside of a lab and at low cost. We don't want a million dollar robotic printer um, that you would need. And this is probably, for me personally, one of the most important ones. You want to be able to alternate between cell types. I, didn't, I should have added also cell densities in XYZ plane. Um, if you know about brain, you know a little bit that in each layer, there are multiple layers and the, the cell density is not the same. So you would like to be able to you know, arrange that uh, when you're using this technology, not be confined into one um, type. 
So this was the goal. Um, whoops. This is the technology that we um, designed with, uh, in collaboration with Ed from the Media Lab. It's very simple. Um, you've probably, the, the photoresistor technology has been around from semiconductors, if there are any uh, people in, uh, in the room. Uh, we use, again, the photo mask. What we do that's different is we use multiple photo masks. So we align them under the microscope um, to, we have certain points that we match with all the masks so that you have that precision. We design them uh, on the computer so you know exactly that what you designed is, you know, the precision where you want to place it. And then uh, here we are constructing our gels. Um, each color represents a different cell type or a different environment. It's just to show you guys that we can place wherever we want what cell type, what cell density. You might have some um, growth serum inside. It, it, you can alternate. Um, so these are some of the pictures that we got from the paper. We can see this. Um, C, D, E, and F shows the gradual placement of each gel. We start with one square. Um, then you also, we design it this way. You can see that we have different shapes that you can design whatever you want, because that's where the digitally comes in. You can do it on the computer any way you want. Um, so here we try to write BAM, BWH, HSD, and MIT, although you know, it seems like a nice trend to do every time you do something new, you write those names. Um, so these are the microscopic pictures, which is important because we want to aim again, remember, for a precise uh, placement. So 10 microns, we were what we were aiming for. So following these, we did some analysis on the, you would think I would be able to work this out. <laughs> there you go. Um, for the precision, um, Gunesh is one of the people in my team. We did some of the analysis. You can see that uh, for the concentric ones are the most difficult ones because you're from all sides. If you're aligning something and you miss something, all of them are messed up. So, but for most of the part, we were in the range of 10 microns, which was by hand um, very good result. Uh, I don't think there's another low cost system that can do this, achieve this. So we want to be able to, let me go back, uh, say if we're placing, that we actually place the I'm ashamed for electrical engineers, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that we um, exactly place the cell types that we want, because this is one of our claims. So each color is a tracker for a cell. Uh, and we saw that in each compartment, indeed, we placed the cells that we wanted in the way we wanted it. Um, if you have further, I didn't include any of these graphs or details, but if you have any questions at the end, please feel free. Uh, so it comes to the neuron part. Um, this was one of the most interesting parts in the, in the paper. We had two different uh, sizes. One of them is 10 micron by 10 micron, and the other one is 500, and my, uh, 500 by 500. We wanted to see the behavior of a neuron. So we were able to encapsulate one in the 100 by 100. Uh, you can imagine it was so small that the probability of getting one was pretty high compared to two or three, right? So. Um, and we saw that it did indeed, the geometry mattered and it passed through uh, to the bigger gel. This is good news because if you're going to bring these you know, pieces together and claim that you're going to build a tissue, you want to see that it goes from one gel to the other when you're aligning them. Uh, so these are the results for different geometries, different volumes. Uh, we saw that it was best in a bigger uh, volume some of the images for this. You can see the nice network forming in the 500. Uh, so these are what the gel originally looks like after you construct them. So the next slide I'm going to show is, if it lets me, is the staining for different kinds of uh, cells within. So you know in, in the brain tissue you have not, not just the neurons, you have glial cells and whatnot. So we want to see what kind of different uh, cells we're getting. Again, there are some you know, graphs uh, about this. You can check the paper and look at them. Okay, one more time. 
So again, after that, that was 2D in the x, y direction. So we want to see how well can we go up to the z direction. Um, these are some of the methods, the same method, and then we use spacers to lift it up to go to another level. So now it's a little bit more tricky because you have x, y alignment with the z alignment. Um, there are bigger pictures here. You can see, so we did this on purpose. Uh, so that you guys can see there are different levels to it in the paper. Uh, this is a final product where you have three layers here. This is a half one layer on top, a second layer, again, to see that we were able to come up. Uh, this is an array of them uh, constructed. Again, and we were able to get very interesting shapes by manipulating um, the colors, the way light diffracts within the color refract, so you were able to get very complicated constructs in an easy way. Uh, so this is what we've done. Uh, the next question is what we're doing next. This is one of the confocal images that we have for one of the gels, nice network. So what's next is, of course, now you have to look at the way the cells are communicating with each other. You know, in the neuron, in the brain, neurons, the way they have that circuitry is not very well defined. So what I'm working on right now is, okay, we have the cells within the gels now, so what is the function of getting some signals, look, having them communicate with each other, seeing, manipulating and being able to see the axons and where they go. Can I manipulate and have it go to X and Y instead of X1 and XY? So uh, that's where we are right now. Um, and one of my colleagues that was in the team, Ahmed, is working on manipulating the cells uh, on a pattern surface. Uh, so this is what I have uh, prepared for the what we've done part. So now. Uh, I want to introduce some of the lab members, the people who worked with, the, with me on this project. Um, Dr. Demirjian and Dr. Boyden, uh, PIs, Media Lab and BAM Labs. Um, Umut was the lead postdoc on this. Uh, Gunesh, uh, MD in training. Uh, Gunesh, can you wave your hand? Uh, so he was, the, uh, he was working on, with me on the, this, designing this technology and having, making sure that it worked. Uh, visiting postdoc in Mal uh, was also working with me on the, the constructs that you saw. And Jake was helping us uh, with the design, troubleshooting the design of that uh, first technology that you saw. Thank you guys. Now, uh, any one of us can answer questions, so if you have questions.